Well, welcome to Tea and Talk Virtual Edition. My name is Leslie Thompson. I am Director of Adult Programs at the Sid Richardson Museum. And before we get into our program and introduce our participants today, I would like to first acknowledge and recognize the original inhabitants of the land that we're on with a land acknowledgement. So we, the Sid Richardson Museum, respectfully acknowledge all Native American peoples who have lived on this land since time immemorial. And the Sid will like to especially acknowledge and pay respect to the Wichita and affiliated tribes, which include the Waco, Kachai, Tawakoni, and Taubea, upon whose historical homeland our museum is located. So in addition to members of the museum staff, we have a special guest with us today. And I'm gonna go around and introduce each person. So after I say your name, just say a quick hello so folks at home can, can see you. Um, so first I've got Janie Cumming. Hi everyone. And Janie is uh, our guest services manager. Then I've got Scott Winterrode. Hello. And he is director of the Sid Richardson Museum. Then I've got Betsy Thomas. Hello. And she is director of education resources. Then I've got our special guest, Michelle Richardson. Hi everyone. And she is public art project manager with the Arts Council of Fort Worth. And then I've got Shelby Orr. Hi. And she is director of school and family programs. Um, so, so quick little review for those who are not familiar with TN Talk. This is a program that's designed to help us slow down the art viewing process. Um, and you might ask, well, why is that important? Um, studies have shown that museum visitors on average spend about 10 to 15 seconds with one work of art. And I don't know about you, but my mind cannot process everything that I see in one artwork in 10 seconds. Um, so Tea and Talk is here to help us pause, maybe take a breath, slow down, um, and really look at one work of art, um, which we'll be doing today for 10 minutes. And in those 10 minutes, we'll share our observations and what we notice. Um, another question that you might have is, uh, why look at art with other people? Um, and while there's certainly a time and place to uh, look at art by yourself, which I fully encourage and I practice myself, um, I think there's also a lot to be said for looking at and talking about an artwork with others. Um, you know, people, everyone comes from a different background and different life experiences, and everyone sees things differently, whether that's like figuratively, interpretively, or actually just quite literally, someone could notice something in a painting that I just didn't see before. Um, so I found that both in real life and also through this program that having a shared experience around a work of art really enriches my overall experience. And I've, I've heard the same from others as well. Um, so with that, let's look at some art together. Um, I've got an image of the painting that we'll be looking today on our screen with us. And this is a painting from our collection by Charles Russell. And I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes and while I do that, everyone here, just go ahead and take a look at the painting and share one thing that you notice. One thing that I'm, I'm noticing right away when I see this painting is all the brown. There is a lot of brown in this painting. Um, just very, very neutral. Highly contrasted with the white horse right in the middle that really grabs my eye from the start. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so Michelle's noticing the white horse in the middle of the painting amongst all the, all the brown around it really helps it pop. What else do y'all notice? Even it looks more. a bit, oh, it just looks a bit treacherous right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, why, do you, why do you say that? Uh, it seems very <laughs> narrow and lots of spiky, uninviting um, uh, plants. And uh, those rocks seem ready to tumble down. Um, and so I would be, they don't look nervous, but I would be nervous going down that <laughs> on a horse. Yeah, so kind of noticing like the precarious nature um, of their environment there, going down that really steep decline, the, the rocks the, and how stable those rocks are. Um, yeah, and noticing just like the tiptoeing of the, the horse down that trail. Yeah, I can notice. I can feel like being on the horse and trying the horse trying to get like a foothold and that's scary like if you've ever been on a horse on any kind of 
incline or decline and you can tell they're trying to get a foothold and it kind of slips for a second and then some of the sort of loose rocks and gravel kind of kind of go out and it's it's a very kind of scary <laughs> scary moment yeah yeah so relating it to a personal experience perhaps there yeah. but yeah like as you were talking about that I could kind of feel that like put myself in that place um and just how treacherous that would feel to be in yeah what else you know along that same line uh the man in front is carrying a gun and I'm like I think you need to have both hands on the horse about now I don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so noticing the now noticing the details and um the objects um, and this man, the man in the front in particular, how, yeah, he has one hand on the, on the reins and one hand on a, on a rifle, or a gun, um, and that must take a lot of skill or he just has a lot of confidence there. <laughs> just going to say someone who's definitely experienced, maybe has done this before, has been in a similar position. Right, yeah, yeah, so it might speak to, yeah, his experience. What else? I hadn't noticed his shadow that's back there right behind him and also the fact that the shadow play and everything underneath the horse really just makes the horse stand out, the white horse again. So very yeah. prominent. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so um, Scott's noticing this shadow on the rock um, cast behind and up on the top there behind the horse. Mm -hmm. You can see the horse and the rider um, and kind of how the horse is really kind of in spotlight there. Yeah. yeah. What else do you notice? Did also, anyone else get the feeling that the shadows were kind of soft? Like I've been trying to figure out what time of day this might be. Like, you know, it's almost in some ways I feel like it might be like sunset, like, you know, or maybe it's sunrise and they're, you know, headed out somewhere. But I've been trying to figure out what time of day this might be. And I've been trying to compare it to the Monet haystacks and you know what time of day would that have been uh but I, I think the shadow like softness compared to the harsh terrain is pretty interesting that's a really good point and that's actually that's a really good question because you can see in the far left distance up on the horizon you can see the light and you know like it's either dawn or dusk there how it creates that changing of colors and changing of light um what do you guys think? Is it sunrise? Is it sunset? What time of day are we talking about here? It's debatable, um, <laughs> uh, always in these paintings. I mean, but I think, you know, the fact that we <clears throat> zeroed in on the fact that it's very brown, and there, I think that lower register of the picture um, is what draws our attention and makes it so brown, where all that rocky kind of pattern is. But in the distance, there is that sense of a, a, a sunrise or sunset. So there are bands of color back there. And the other place that I notice color is on the, it, I think it's the, it's a saddle sack or something of that nature, or a pouch or something that's in front of the man on the white horse. Um, there are these bands of red, yellow, blue maybe. So it's interesting because there, it, as overall, tonally it's very brown. It's also got these areas and passages of color. Yeah, that's a good point. So Scott's pointing out um, the figure in the front on the white horse we've been talking about. He has, um, maybe that's a blanket there. That's a very colorful blanket. Um, and it's kind of one of the few concentrated areas of all these bright, uh, bright brilliant colors. Um, and as we've been looking at this painting, you know, I mentioned at the very beginning that I was just picking up all this brown. But as I've been looking at the brown, I'm actually noticing more color now. Like, mm -hmm. Up at the top um, in the shadow there in the crevice, it's like a green shadow. Um, and even in some of the crevices, yeah, in other parts of the rock, there's some green um, right under the horse. Um, there's a little bit of like emerald on, I don't know my colors very well, but, and even as you like journey down, it gets kind of red, um, reddish brown. And, you know, you kind of get these like, I don't know what you call them, but they're like highlights of the edges of the rock um, that are like this gold tan color as well. Um, so <laughs> even though initially I thought that like this is a dull, dull, dully colored painting, it actually has a lot of color in it. What else do you notice? Is that, I see blue that might be water, but I don't know if I'm just dreaming that up, but to the Where? left. 
before you get to the yeah right there is that like a okay I mean could that be a waterfall or I think what? it's hard to read in this painting um but if you if you see another image of it or you see it in front it's actually a cliff it's a cliff oh. in shadow um mm -hmm. and if you see there's like a line yeah there's um, a road yeah there's like a trail oh, I see there it. yes yeah. I see it yeah um and now that I look at the trail like it makes me wonder how long have they been on like a side of a cliff <laughs> to get to where they are now uh, yeah. I'm pretty worried about them <laughs> <laughs> I'm also so. wondering since someone noted the gun in the main figure's hand if they don't really know what they're going to see around the corner if maybe I mean he doesn't look completely ready to like fire but, you know, maybe they don't know what to expect around the bend. And then especially the figure behind the main one is really kind of leaning over, trying to kind of see what's around the corner. That's a really, really good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So getting back to this notion of this idea of him holding the gun, why would he be, why would he be holding the gun? Um, at, and Betsy pointing out, well, perhaps there could be danger. Um, and then seeing, yeah, the figure behind him, especially like leaning over, like, no, why you would, you would not want to lean over while you're off in a cliff. So obviously <laughs> he's trying to poke around to see if they can notice anything. So not, yeah, we really don't know what's ahead um, in front of them on the trail. That's a good point. The horse behind him has got a head way out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see it. I see it. I kind of get a sense of battle or something also with the the white horse that's has to be some sort of a leader versus the other horses being kind of a brown and with little white on their heads just seems like it's definitely signifying some sort of um leadership and I don't know I guess ranking even in even an order of how they're moving yeah yeah that's a really good point so yeah again pointing to the white horse and Noticing that the figures on the horses in the background, those horses, most of them are, are uh, brown horses, are all the same color. And so the white horse stands out and maybe could, yeah, signify um, that the figure in the front is, is more of a, in a leadership position. What else do you notice? I'm noticing that there's, you know, we're, we kind of started touching on the narrative a little bit of like, you know, why are they there? What's coming? Um, and noticing that they're, of at least of what we can see, there's only four figures here. So that's a pretty small group. Um, and the figure in the back to the immediate um, figure behind the front figure looks like he has maybe a rifle across him. Yeah, on his saddle there. Um, I don't know what the other figures might have with them, mm -hmm. but they're obviously prepared for something, but there's not a lot of them there. So it, I don't, it doesn't seem like they're searching out um, battle or, you know, uh, of some degree. It's probably best practice to have one on you when you're out. Because like Betsy said, you don't know what's around the corner. You're kind of in the elements and uh, might be something out out there yeah and as we saw that behind them that trail they they're really out there <laughs> uh we have no idea how far they've traveled that, by this point um and um we really we so we've we've met our time here and we just uh we just started touching on the narrative here um but i feel like we could um we've kind of touched on i, I think what leads us to the sharing the title um with y'all which is um it's called There May Be Danger Ahead uh, from 1893. Um, and I think we, we really kind of touched on that with Betsy pointing out the gun and, and why, um, what they might be precipitating um, around that corner. Um, but uh, I'll leave a, a link to this painting. Um, you can see on the, our website um, in the comments in the description of this, of this painting, but we'll, We'll wrap up our part of the conversation here today, um, but we'd love to keep the conversation going for those who are watching this. Um, if you have questions, um, comments, or observations, um, please do leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. 
and hear what uh, you notice in this painting. And I hope that watching this program maybe encourage you to take a pause in your day um, and slow down and engage deeply with one work of art with us. Um, but otherwise, thank you everyone for joining us for Tea and Talk today.